Frank Vespi here from the Racing Biz. Welcome. It's Preakness weekend here at Pimlico and I'm joined by Ron Knobloch, Gary Quill of the GQ Approach on the Racing Biz. We're talking Preakness here today. It's Friday and the sun is out after the showers came, but we're expecting a fast main track for Preakness Day. And so let's start with you, Ron. We have the Preakness Mile 316, it's million and a half dollars, grade one, race uh, 137 or something like that tomorrow. I think it's race 13. 142. I knew I was close. <laughs> so give us a, what's your sense, like what's a, your overview of tomorrow's Preakness stakes? Well, I think uh, it starts with the fact that we've got the sun shining in the window there and that uh, we're not going to have that, uh, we were not expecting anyway to have that big sloppy mess that we had last year. And uh, that of course played uh, into the hands of a very fine racehorse exaggerator that really loved the slop. And, uh, but tomorrow we've got a fast track, so I'm kind of playing this for a fast track, and I'm looking for speed, and uh, I'm having a hard time getting off of uh, Always Dreaming. Uh, this horse uh, has got the kind of stride and that cruising speed, and just not a lot of other speed in the race. So I'd be looking for, uh, as I think everyone is, is for Always uh, Dreaming to... Uh, go out on or near the lead and uh, I think the only other speed horse we might see with Always Dreaming uh, is the uh, actually the 10 horse here Conquest More Money. So we get a little little bit of speed there and uh, I think it's going to be on or near the pace which uh, uh, I've kind of broken it into five horses that I'm looking at. Uh, the one horse multiplier uh, Cloud Computing Always Dreaming, Classic Empire, and the 10, uh, Conquest More Money. I think they'll all be sort of on or near the front, and I think that's uh, probably the way that we're going to see it. Uh, there are some really fine, fine uh, deep closers in here, but I think they're going to have uh, uh, just uh, a, a lot to do, just a lot to do. So we call you a chalk-eating weasel, so thank you for that. <laughs> and so and, uh, you take up for the four to five favorite, and that, that's fantastic. And uh, I uh, wish, I assume you were on uh, Shaman Ghost at two to five today in the Pimlico Special. I, I actually pass on those races, and, and uh, you know, I love nothing more than trying to beat uh, Todd Pletcher and Bob Baffert on these favorites. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I just think it's going to be difficult. If I did have to choose one of them, I think Classic Empire is actually going to be the horse to beat. Uh, he should be sitting in the catbird seat, and I think uh, tomorrow will be a complete. By the way, I, I'm throwing out the Kentucky Derby uh, for the most part, and uh, I'm looking for uh, some some different races here. And I'm actually looking for Classic Empire and Julian Leperu to uh, possibly turn the tides tomorrow. And and the the, the price play, if I have. Anything close to that would be the uh, the ten horse. Uh, keep, keep an eye on this conquest more money. I I actually did bet that horse is seventeen to one at uh, Oaklawn and just got beat. Uh, yeah, no, you ran a huge race in the in the Arkansas Derby, beat a half length, and I, I certainly think that if you're if you like Classic Empire three to one. I don't see why you wouldn't like Conquest More Money, who's going to be 15. So, uh, Gary, let's turn to you. Just uh, let's start with sort of an overview. When, okay. what do you, how do you expect this race to uh, shape up? Well, the, the race is going to have to go through Always Dreaming. Obviously, he's going to be the speed of the speed. Um, Conquest Mo Money. Um, I think classic empire what they're hoping for is that those two go out and set uh, an unrealistic pace which I doubt will happen but I do think the classic empire is the class of the field of the empire in fact. Uh, yeah and, and um, you know two-year-old champion even though he won the Arkansas Derby won he had a rough trip in there and he also um, wasn't Cranked up 100%. That was his, uh, you know, first time out after a short layoff uh, when uh, he disappointed in Florida. But um, the Derby, everybody knows that uh, he had a horrible trip and he still wound up fourth. You know, the question is, is how much did that take out of him? You know, getting fourth. Um, but I was at Churchill Downs Derby Week. And I have been out here every morning since Always Dreaming showed up and all the other ones. And I was impressed with 
Classic Empire's Fitness. So I think he looks better this week than he did leading up to Derby week. Um, with that being said, Always Dreaming hasn't changed a bit. You know, um, for some reason he went nuts at, at Churchill Downs and they had to put those draw reins on him in order to control him. They've done the same thing here. He went out this morning without him, but it was just a jog, so you really can't tell. But the strange thing about it is you see him around the barn, you see they're, they're, they're bathing him, and he looks like he's on Quaaludes or something. <laughs> totally different horse. So um, I, I see Classic Empire a bit more fit for this one. Obviously, there's only going to be 10 horses versus 20. Um, I do think Classic Empire will be like third in a more stalking position um, in order to, because everybody knows that really isn't there, there, there's not a whole lot of pace, right. which hurts the majority of the field, which are deep closers. So um, I, I couldn't disagree with Ron's assessment of how the pace would go. Um, I think Conquest Mo Money has impressed me in the morning being fit and the $150,000 in order to run tells you something about uh, his chances. So it wouldn't surprise me that uh, it becomes what they call the merry-go-round race, that if the track turns up the, to be speed favoring, which after the quagmire that hit us today, when it dries out, there's no doubt that by the first race tomorrow it's going to be fast. Yeah. So forget about whether the track's going to be off or whatever. So um, they could come out of the gate first time under the finish line. It could be always dreaming and uh, conquest mode money with um, probably classic empire right behind them, and it could finish that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the new shooter that I kind of give a, a small shot to is Multiplier. Multiplier, uh, every time I've seen him gallop in the morning, and the trainer's phrase, he couldn't blow out a match, uh, comes to mind. So he, he's good. But, you know, with a field of 10, and I didn't look up the statistics, but to have five derby runners come back to the Preakness is kind of rare because sure. everybody shoots for the Derby and once the, the, the Derby's done they're like okay you know we'll, we'll save our horse who wants to come back in two weeks you know when these horses are used to running every four to six weeks right now let me ask you guys this I mean I, I think it's interesting and and I certainly have looked at things the same way that there's plenty of there's not much pace in here and uh, you're gonna want uh, horses that are forwardly placed, but the horse that ran second in the Derby, I think, ran an absolutely monster race that day. That's looking at Lee. He's right. going to be double digits. In a, in a, yeah, they went pretty fast in the early part of that race, and yeah, he was on the inside, and the inside was the place to be. But no other horse in the field made up more than two lengths that day, and he made up like 14. I mean, he really closed. I, I literally don't think I've heard any analyst talk about him at all this week. I, I would just uh, comment on that, uh, uh, Frank, that, uh, that, first of all, a really good point. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure that that wasn't enhanced by the track condition, which was, uh, which was sloppy at uh, Churchill Downs. He came up the rail. He got that rail and line, a perfect coming track, up no the question. rail, kind of reminiscent of uh, some of the bow rail trips. but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that I'm not sure that may not have been it. But I've, I I feel uh, I'm in agreement with Gary that uh, I think we might be looking at what we saw a couple of years ago from Oxbow. Uh, we got Go to a fit, the front. We, yeah we we saw the the track fast. Uh, Oxbow had the speed. He he took it to the front and he went all the way around. The track was really hard and fast that day and. I, I, I'm assuming that that's what we're going to be looking at tomorrow, which makes it really hard on some of these deep closers like looking at Lee, Senior Investment, Term of Art, uh, and, and a horse that I, I was in love with earlier in the year, Gunavera, even with the bad trip at the Florida Derby. Um, 
uh, you know, Gunnavera can uh, can can possibly come gunning with Mike Smith. gunnavera has got the new rider there, and Mike Smith. Mike Smith's the money rider. I'm hoping that uh, that Mikey will place Gunnavera closer than than what we've seen in the last few races. Uh, JJ was uh, hot as a pistol today, but Mike Smith can come in there and he comes out of nowhere and wins these type races. So. Um, but uh, yeah, looking at Lee Frank and um, and and Hens, uh, Hens is Hens uh, is a horse I loved uh, in the Derby. Uh, loved him at the Derby too. Uh, he had beat uh, Conquest More Money and, uh, in 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 the Sunland Derby, and I just can't help that. Uh, well, if this were the Belmont, we'd be talking a completely different uh, story with uh, Hens and some of these other deep closers, and we saw that again last year with Creator. We saw, you know, had some trouble in the Derby. I loved Creator. Uh, didn't did, the Preakness is not really quite the race for for those type closers. But come Belmont time, the horses come flying. Gary, what say you? I hated Creator, but <laughs> and I still hate Creator because he beat me out of a pick four in the Belmont. Well, so, thanks I had nothing. Dustin, so how do you think so I, I feel? Yeah, I did too. And with an eighth to go, we, yeah, were, we yeah. were counting our money. Uh -huh. This is scary. We all kind of have the same sad story about I. I, I was on well, Kurt, to horse racing. Yeah, I, I was on Creator that Derby, and of course yeah. he comes back and wins the Belmont. And then we get off him at the Belmont, right. the race that we should be on him, yeah. right? Uh, Hey, staying with looking at Lee, uh, you know, everybody's going to say, oh, you know, when the Belmont comes around, that'll be his race because he just is no. always closing. Totally wrong. Exactly, right. But I'm saying, everybody says, everybody that, says totally that about wrong. the horse who comes flying at the end of the yeah. derby. Oh, wait till the Ice Belmont. Box. Yeah. Right. No, that's not going to happen. Um, I was on looking at Lee in his Arkansas derby when... The jock was all he over ran, the place. That's another race. He ran great. Right. And that's why I, I liked him in the Derby. I didn't think he'd win. Unfortunately, I didn't have him second. So that's what uh, I didn't cash on, on those odds. But he did get a dream trip. He saved ground the whole way. Uh, and and typically, you know, when, when you get a decent trip, you're going to finish decently. And, and I think that's what he did. Uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, hence was my Derby horse, so he'll yeah. probably come back and win the D Belmont or something. Wait, that, that's interesting. <laughs> well, at least we know that. We were all on Hence. Uh, I was still reluctant to uh, to embrace uh, Always Dreaming and even Classic Empire. I would. I think we we're all value players uh, at, at the Derby. We saw or the, stupid. Or stupid. Yeah. But uh, I think we're all going to see um, we're all going to see some good races out of Hence and and. Uh, uh, looking at Lee, they're they're going to run some big. But whether whether or not it be at the Belmont, but um, but we're going to see uh, with the right track conditions, and you have to look at that uh, with each race. Uh, we're going to see some good races out of them, but and we just don't know how good this always dreaming uh, could could be. I've heard people talk about that stride of his, that it is one of those. It's that special stride that you see in, in certain horses, but I don't want to. I don't want to jump too early here. Let let let's see another race tomorrow, and then we can all uh, uh, look for those accolades. So you you come down uh, some combination. Always dreaming, classic empire one two probably. Yeah, yeah, actually three three. Okay, I, I'm looking for classic empire uh, on top if I'm pressed. Uh, and yeah, I probably got to put uh, all these dreaming in there, but I want to put Conquest more money in there. I think he could hang on if they don't press too hard, and he could even go to the front uh, and and force always dreaming to, and then then it might set up a little better for. But but my three are, are I'm going to stick stick to the front end with uh, Classic Dreaming, Classic Empire, Always Dreaming, and Conquest more money. Multiplier coming up there for uh, some of the small pieces and uh, possibly uh, cloud computing or gun of era. Now, let me ask you this with um, Conquest Bone Money, he's backed up late in his two tries going a mile and eighth, added 16th here. Good point. Is that is that worry you? Uh, it does, it, it does. Uh, again, um, we're, we're not quite sure. I don't think that 
the Pletcher team is just way too smart. They're gonna, they're not gonna let uh, Always Dreaming get out there and do anything too stupid on the front end. So that might get let Conquest more money get out there if if he's gonna get it, have a real shot at this. I think he really has to go out. Uh, if he kind of can lull him to sleep a little bit, uh, I think he might be in for a piece of it. But yeah, uh, that um, uh, that uh, that second eighth of a mile. Uh, uh, or the uh, that final sixteenth. That, that final sixteenth. It's, it's going to get very dicey. And he is an Uncle Mo, which Uncle Mo liked the mile. Yeah, better I, than he liked I, anything right. else. Right. I, I again now. I think we're seeing the Uncle Mo's, and I've kind of called it on um, my Uncle Mo's. I I like it a mile and a sixteenth or less to really be right. real competitive. Seven eighths to a mile. And, and I think we saw the Tappets are the ones that are gonna gonna get the uh, mile and a quarter. Um, but. So yeah, that's going to be real dicey. But um, we know Uncle Mo on a speedy track, like mm -hmm. uh, the Kentucky Derby uh, last year with Nyquist. Uh, if they, if you allow them to get away, they get pretty gutsy. I'm going to take the counterpoint on the Conquest Mo money backing up. Okay. Okay. Uh, he was undefeated. He, he went three for three. Didn't back up those. Okay. So we look at the Sunland Derby. He, he makes a middle move, he's sacking, he appears to hang, uh, and he doesn't back up. The, the fractions were some... I don't agree with that. The, the fractions were somewhat <laughs> fast early on. So, because Hans got the dream trip and just had the monster move, he lets one horse go, so you're saying he's backing up. And the frac, you know, they, they ran the final fraction in 12 and 2. Same way with uh, Oaklawn Park. He, he was on top the whole way around. I mean, 46 and 4, 111, that's not crawling. So mm -hmm. he did all the heavy lifting, mm -hmm. and uh, Classic Empire came through. Uncle Moe's good at a mile, but you know what? On bottom line, his dam is at a seeking the gold, and I'm a Brisnet guy, and his distance numbers are way up there. So I disagree that he he's distance limited. Well, we know seeing the gold was in a photo finish in the Breeders' Cup Classic right. uh, at a mile and a quarter. So Sounds like you bet him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, can't I, I was there, but I, I, I can't remember. But I, I do Please know I, I, I respect the, uh, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that respects the dam side. So that's a real good point Gary makes there is that, uh, you know, let's remember that Conquest More Money and the Arkansas Derby had beat everybody but the Breeders' Juvenile Champion Classic Empire. So when we look at that odds board, and, and although Classic uh, Empire came up and won that race, looked pretty easy, let's remember that Conquest More Money came, came second to uh, what could be uh, one of the best three-year-olds in the so, country. So, all right, but, uh, and I, I agree, I think he, he ran a great race in the Arkansas Derby, but Shouldn't we like Hens then? I mean, Hens ran past him like he was tied to a post in the Sunland Derby. Well, I mean, Hens, that to me visually, that was the most impressive so I, triple I think, crown. Break. I think well, that's he, why we were I, all on Hens in the I, Derby. Well, because we're all stupid. <laughs> uh, I think you got that. You know, three minds uh, that think alike. That that was the exact. Uh, law. I thought it was going to be kind of slick there and go. Well, if I could bet uh, Conquest more money at seventeen to one in the Arc Derby here, then. Uh, I could sure as heck bet Hans in the uh, Kentucky Derby, but I've learned now that uh, no more closers at the Kentucky Derby. I, I, I just will not do it anymore if they uh, they can't run up and uh, they want fast times out there at the Derby, and uh, you can't you're not up within four or five lengths. Forget it. <laughs> all right, so you're you're gonna end up Classic Empire, Always Dreaming, Conquest, Momani. Your final top three. I'm gonna go Classic Empire. Always dreaming, and now I'm gonna go back to. I'm gonna give multiplier the yeah. third place because. That's um, with you guys and multiplier. Well, here, here's, here's why you I'm like with, a dead dog and three goats. All right, well, uh, uh, okay. All right, so one of those dead dogs or a goat runs in the Sir Barton. So we'll see uh, Hedge Fund. He beat yeah, in the yeah. Illinois Derby. That'll be helpful. So if Hedge Fund lays an egg, then you can toss Multiplier and say he he did uh, beat no one. But um, 104 Brisnet Speed Figure, 
is the best last race speed figure in this field. Is it really? Yes, it is. Those are decent times. Yeah, because the buyers, I believe, come back different. Um, I mean, his progression, he, he, he's very lightly raced. Uh, I mean, he, Brisnet again, I know everybody out there, buyer guys, but sorry, you know, um, Andrew Byer hasn't picked the Derby winner, or his Derby horse has, <laughs> hasn't century, even yeah. hit, hit the high five uh, in yeah. the last century. Yeah. So, um, I, 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 I refuse to use that <laughs> word when it comes to speed figures. So, the Brisnet, the, this is the progression for Multiplier, 78, 86, 93, 104. So it's not like he's jumping leaps and bounds. It's a nice progression, and um, you know he's he's got that kind of closer mentality. But at least it looks like in his last few races, he's a little not bit a more he, he's more forwardly placed. So um, I, I'm not crazy about Joel Rosario, even though everybody kind of likes Joel versus Brian Hernandez or James Graham. But uh surprised I took Graham off that horse. <laughs> I I, I kinda you know the Illinois well, well, yeah, why can you know, win a race. You know, why not? That's what he's doing. And so um They didn't ask me. Surprising. You know, everybody's kinda just you know, saying, Oh, multiplier and he's uh, because he was lightly raced, he, he didn't make his first start until ja end of January, kinda like always dreaming. Um didn't uh, break his maiden until two months ago. But what did we see in the Black Eyed Susans? I mean, a maiden, maiden, with a maiden Black -Eyed Susan. won the Black Eyed Susans and she made her career debut 60 days ago. Hmm. So it's horse racing strange. You know, I, I always used to be a guy who would look at all the figures uh, and, and all the statistics and records and do by process of elimination. Oh, this hasn't happened since 1933. He can't do it. But you know what? The last couple of years, it's become very formful. And for the fifth year in a row, Kentucky Derby betting favorite has won. And coincidentally, we're five years into the Derby point system. So there's something to be said with the horses who've earned their way in, the good ones, because you don't have the the Trinibirds in there, the ones who, who, who have a false um, sense of you know just uh, getting speed out there. So uh, I was hedging between using um, Gun of Error or Multiplier, so I'm going to go Multiplier in the third spot.